Hi there, it's Kevin with Gone Rogue Games slash Rogue Deck Builder here with another booster box opening. This one's gonna be a collector's booster. This one is for the Duck Butter. Captain Duck Butter wants to open up a Kamigawa. Maybe we should actually uh, do it so it's face up here. Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Collector's Booster. Some juicy stuff in this set. And to top it off, we're gonna also do a Double Masters VIP edition. So this is gonna be a fun video. Um, we're going to just go through the Double Masters first, and then the Kamigawa Neon D D Dynasty. Ugh, tongue twister there. And hopefully we can crack some goodies out of here. So what's it? What do we want? It's like a Mana Crypt. Is that the good stuff? A doubling Season? Those are the good cards out of the, the VIP edition. And I thought before we uh, go and crack those, I'm going to showcase some of these deck boxes that Duck Butter had us made. So these beautiful RDB deck boxes. Uh, that one is for Slivers. And then we have... A, another blue one. So I'm, I'm running out of these nests. These are the only colors I have left. Left is ooh, that one is shiny. That one just shined right in my eyes and blinded me. So you can blind your opponents. This is a, a trick. So you know this is an angle shoot. You can blind your opponents and distract them with your deck box. And this one, I don't know what uh, deck that's for. Was that some sort of lotus bloom uh, for that? And I really love these these nest 100s. Um, I think they've discontinued. I don't know if Dragon Shield actually makes these nest 100s anymore. Um, but they are great deck boxes. They fit. 100 cards in them. It's kind of hard to put like sleeve commander decks in them. I think that's one of the reasons why they might have just continued, but they're really, really solid deck boxes. Um, if you want one of these made, you can definitely uh, message me on Discord or message Zach on Discord and we can quote you the price. Can't remember off the top of my head exactly what they're going for. It's like a teamer deck here for that one. And then we have a just a, a scaly gone rogue. It's another one we can blind your opponents with. Kind of beautiful one there. Another black one. We have the ooh, another shiny. You must like the shiny ones there, Mr. Duck Butter. Yeah, that's what that's how you cheat. The, oof, that does blind if you look directly in it. Pirates. Apparently you have a pirate deck that this one can go into. And last one, at least my favorite color, green here with the Celestia symbol here. And just good old RDB Celestia. So again, if you want one of these made, message me on Patreon. Thanks, Duck Butter, for having these made. You are a great patron. Let's go on to the first one being the Double Masters VIP Edition. So this set's kind of getting a, a bit old now with the value actually starting to creep back up. Um, yeah, I'm really surprised that Magic was able to absorb as much product as it has in the past few years. It just shows how healthy the game actually is with a company that, whoa, it's just throwing all caution to, win, to the wind by per, just uh, creating product after product after product after product. So anyway, we'll start here with the VIP Edition and see what we can crack. And hopefully, man... It almost looks like it's resealed there with the <laughs> the glue that's coming off of this sucker. But it is definitely a fresh one with a fresh pack. And don't have the best lighting set up here. Uh, we don't have time to set everything up. But again, we are in the, in the process of remodeling our store. And hopefully we can get a dedicated um, studio. That way it's all set up and ready to go. Just a flick of a button is what we hope is what we can uh, then start and point and shoot. So we got the Voldovan Rage shiny card there. And I think we're just going to go through. We've seen all the commons and uncommons for this set quite a bit. We have the Welding Jar. That's a good uncommon. Thirst for Knowledge. That was just reprinted, wasn't it, in Kamigawa? So this can go in your Kamigawa cards with the Thirst for Knowledge. And Galvanic Blast, great card. And the first rare is a Pure Steel Paladin. Does see play in Modern. Very, very good card. We have the Conjurer's Closet, a very awesome commander card with the Conjurer's Closet to uh, return cards back to the, from the grave. Okay, so your first one is an Exploration. You can't be too disappointed in Exploration. This is a, a great rare. It's one of the better rares you can pull for the Foil uh, Full Art and a Worm Coil Engine. Now, this one is a little bit of a dud, I believe, for the Mythic. It's not bad, though. This is a great card. Um, it used to see a ton of modern play. I'm not sure exactly if it sees as much modern play as it used to, but uh, uh, this is an old classic old iconic magic card, the, the Worm Coil Engine. So Exploration definitely is the better hit over than the Worm Coil Engine, but they're both, you know, pretty decent hits in the scope of things. As far as the foils, we got the Swamp and the Mountain for the Full Art Foil. Remember when these things were so highly uh, sought after, and now they're kind of just so meh. And we got some tokens here. So Worm Coil Engine Exploration is definitely not a bad pull for the Double Masters VIP. All right, let's go on to the Kamigawa. So this is actually the first Kamigawa booster box that I've opened for collectors or collectors edition boosters box, not draft. I did what I say. Did I even say? I think I just said booster box here. So, uh, good luck to you, Mr. Duck Butter. Let's hopefully we can crack some. What's even good in here? Bazaju 
is good. Can't remember what the most expensive card in here. Other than, isn't there some unique cards just in collectors? I think you can give them only in collectors and set boosters now. Um, they put some unique slots for it. So let's just get on to the juicy stuff. All right, so goes this way. He's got some shine to them. And we got the first foil land being a forest. And then we have seven tail and a sky blessed. Yeah, let's get to the juicy stuff. A Weaver Harmony, the first foil rare. And the full art is a Katsuma, the animator. So I can't remember if this one's in the set or not, or if this is one of those cards you can only get out of this. But put plus one's counter on each of the three target non-creature artifacts. Oh, wow. That is pretty juicy for a 3-3 for four mana. And they can also turn a, a, a vehicle into base power of... Oh, an artifact in the base power 1-1. One, one. And gains flying. A soul transfer being the other full art. Um, decent card. And Hitsuka consumes all. This is a card I want to mess around with in standard, as I think it's quite powerful versus a number of decks. It, it wipes treasures, it wipes like play, uh, tokens. Um, it can get rid of a lot of other just one drops that go back. And wow, this is super dark. It should have super dark on the camera too. Uh, this this foil here with thousand face shadow. Um, this one actually looks like it's out of commander decks, right? So uh, enters the battlefield from your hand if it's attack and attack. Oh, no, no. It, it creates a copy of an attacking creature. And we got a samurai token for the token. So some pretty neat ones there uh, from the first collector's booster. So, so far, collector's boosters are, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like this one was underprinted. I know there's some murmurings are out there saying these were underprinted, but I didn't have any problems getting collectors from my distributor. So we have the Harmonious Emergence. And we'll just get on to the good stuff again. Now we got that beautiful, beautiful mountain. So the mountain. And then we got Lion Slash, one of the best cards in Limited. This card is such a powerhouse in Limited. I had a couple of my pre-release had the Lion Slash. And this card was great. So um, this is just kind of, kind of a, a scavenging news type card. And it can then reconfigure onto other stuff with plus one counter. It's pretty good card. And then we got the Myosian of Towering Might. And, ooh, and there's the Battlefield Indestructible. If you cast from your hand, 8-8. Eight, eight. And then we have the Restoration of the Janu. Just a regular rare, huh? Is there nothing special about this? Or is this out of... No, this is, this is just a regular rare. What's up with this one? Huh. Um, I didn't think you could just get just regular sagas. Maybe I'm, 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 am I, is this like an alt art or something? I don't know. Some in the comment section. The reality chip as the full art with the super weedy art there. You can see the super, sorry, my camera does not want to, to focus here. I think it likes to focus like right there. Um, so, um, and play lands and cast spells from top of your library as long as it, it's, it's reconfigured. And the March of the Burging Life. I don't know how I feel with this card. It's very awkward to make it work and limited, especially. And constructed also feels like such a liability. Um, it's good for getting your multiples. Another samurai pilot token, like the last one. Next up, we have a another pilot samurai. Geez, they're all pilot samurais. Um, get to the good stuff here. We have a uh, planes. That is blurry. It looks blurry on the camera, but it's even more blurry in real life here. That one's kind of a blurry foil. And then we get... Wow, this is super blurry. Is this supposed to be like a cold foil? It feels almost like a... Uh, not a cold foil. Uh, what do they call the other ones that are an etched foil? Is there etched ones in collectors? Because this just feels so weird. The the texture on this sucker. like It's not picking up on the camera, but it's it's just it's grainy. Uh, then we have another Thousand Face Shadow, an Iron Soul Enforcer. You can re return artifact card from the uh, graveyard of battlefield when it attacks when it or your commander attacks alone. You can so this must be a commander card. We have the Scrap Welder, and we also have a another Thousand Face Shadow. I guess you're just gonna get the Thousand Face Shadow box, and then a farewell. Okay, so there got it. There, this is, has to be an etched. Because this is super grainy. So this is the, what they call the etched foiling in here with the farewell. And the, this is going to be a, a powerhouse of a commander card. So I think that's pretty pretty big hit there. But that uncommon also, yeah, this this has got to be an etched too. Really? Ah, that's so weird. It almost it doesn't quite look as pronounced, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Alrighty. Next up we have the human monk token. No one cares about the tokens. We have a, another nice little um, island. And 
Then we go to the Lizard Blades, giving double strike to creatures or itself. That's actually a pretty cool card with the Lizard Blades. We have the Yoshimaru, Ever Faithful. Whenever another legendary permanent enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one counter on Yoshimaru and then as partner. Mm, pretty good. Legendary dog there. Good old doggo. I don't know if you hear my dogs that are fighting underneath the table. I can't. No matter what room I go into, they have to follow me and, and cause problems. Uh, then we have Satsuka, the Living Lore. And the Springleaf Avenger. This card is pretty sweet with the Ninjutsu 4, but returning a permanent back to your from your grave or to your hand. And the March of the Swirling Mists. So actually seeing standard right now with the uh, card that reduces the cost by every target you target. And there's our spirit here. So not the greatest ones in that pack. We'll get on to the Zinex pack. Okay, we have the go on to the land. Ooh, that one pops. I really like how that, that one pops super nice here. Uh, then we have... The first rare being the Ogre Head Helm. Another good card in Limited. This actually did really well when I had it. So just a 2-2 two, two for 2 bear. And then it reconfigures. And it's also pretty good uh, when it uh, you can sacrifice it later on to, to dig for bigger stuff. Or even equip it onto other stuff and sacrifice. Oh, wow. We got some damage out of the pack. Uh, womp womp. Good thing the most, most of the damage is just on that spirit. But then we have the Tribute to Hirobi. Which each point of creature rat. And then it comes as, as a 3-3. Three, three. And then you can gain control of all the rats you created. Access denied. Counter target spell and create X11 Thopter, where X is that spell's mana value. Kind of cool, cool spell with the access denied. And restoration of the Janu again. And another invoke calamity with that alternate border. I don't know what they call that one in this collector's one. Not a bad, bad pull. Also seeing a lot of standard play with the invoke calamity. Um, then we have. A, another mountain. Did we get that mountain yet? Nope, we got the other mountain. And so it looks like you get one per pack, so it's always going to be one per pack from these collectors. And, up oh, double card. A foil and a non-foil. And the first... Ooh, see, that one looks etched. I don't know. That looks etched. I don't know if it's picking it up. Can I... My autofocus not, must not be on on the camera here. But it's just... Then we have the Tamiyo Completed Sage. Tamiyo Completed Sage as well as the Kamainu Battle Armor, and the Spring Avenger, another one of those. Uh, Katsoto the Silent Spider, that is a mouthful of text there. So when it enters the battlefield, exile target card other than base land from opponent's graveyard. Search that player's graveyard hand and library for the number of cards of the same name and exile them. That player shuffles for as long as Katosu. You may play one of the exile cards and you may spend mana as though mana of any color. And speaking of there's the Reducture, this is actually seeing a lot of play in standard right now with the Hinata Dawn Crowned. And another samurai token. So, on to the next one. Yeah, what is it? The there's the uh, eight mana spell out of um, Strixhaven that just combos with this Hinata because you can basically cast it for two mana because you can target every land with it. Okay, so uh, virus beetle. Oops, put in the wrong pile here. We have a swamp with the balloon, or whatever they call it, the lamp. Beautiful card. And the first one we got, rare-wise, is going to be Mirror Box. That is a reprint. Losing the legendary rule. And the organic extinction, destroy all non-artifact creatures for 10 mana plus improvise. So pretty sweet in an artifact-based deck. I don't, is this in the set? I can't remember if it's the set or if it's... No, it's got to be Commander. This Commander symbol. And we have the Invent Inventive Iteration. I love this card. This card is such a bomb. I had it in a limited deck in a, a pre-release, and this card, card just won so many games. Once it gets flipped on the other side, where you can just cast, like, converted mana cost two and threes, and in, in limited, the vast majority of cards are converted mana cost, like, two and three. So you can just, like, shut people down. The Surge Hacker Mech. Um, and then Coyote, Soul of Kamagawa. Nice five-color commander. Um, enters the battlefield, another target permanent you gain indestructible as long as you have Kyota. And then we got a spirit token here. Next up, we have another spirit token, spirits galore in this set. And we have the island. Ooh, look, that's like got some wear on it already. That kind of sucks. Already got its foil, foil peeling off. And then we have 
the Reckoner Bank Buster, and my Ocean of the Cryptic Dreams. Another March of Swirling Mists. There we go. We got the Bazaju. That's a good card. Very ex uh, expensive rare, I believe, because it's just got a huge upside. Destroy to artifact and enchantment or non-basic land opponent controls. And then the Mind Link Mech. Good little card there. This pack is kind of stubborn. Construct token. We have... We're on going the wrong way here. We have the Forest. And... Then... First up, we have the Biting Palm Ninja. It is a Biting Palm that will bite your palms. Or it has a palm that is biting. Pretty good card. Aki Battle Squad. Yep, this is whenever one or more modified creatures you control attack on tap. All modified creatures you control after this phase. Combat phase, there's an additional combat phase. Only triggers once per turn. Uh, Katosi the Silent Spider. Um, we already saw that, that one. Another Lion Sash. And the Teaching of the Kirin as the Foil Rare. Apologize for the glare here, too. Should have done the full setup when we uh, did this box opening. All right, next up we have a nice little beautiful treasure token. If everyone knows me, I hate treasures. I hate treasures with a passion. I think it's one of the dumbest mechanics they've ever introduced into Magic. All right, so let's go on to the land is a nice beautiful swamp again. And double another double. Hey, that's been happening a lot. Uh, the Ink Rise Infiltrator, uh, Walker. <laughs> I guess you're going to build a deck of spiders, silent spiders. Um, yep. That is kind of cool. That is a five mana to rip stuff out of their hand. So we do finally get like a, a good card to rip out the one, one trick pony decks, but it is a five mana to do so. Unquenchable Fury. Enchanted Creature has when it deals X damage to defending player where X is the number of cards in their hand. Has whenever this creature attacks, deals X damage where X is, is in their hand, then it comes back. Uh, the Goro Goro Disciple of uh, Ryusu. And we have another of the Channel Lands, the black one. I like these long term. I think they're going to be very good. Another Spring Leaf Avenger. There's your third one. There's your standard deck right there with a the Mono Green Ninjutsu or, you know, just you know, <laughs> just Mono Green Stomping. And then this trades up into a 6 5. Like any sort of ETB. Is there a good ETB effect right now? I can't remember if there is one right now in a um, standard. I guess you could return back your chariot. I don't know if that's the best thing to do, though. It would be kind of weird with the new Jitsu to uh, do a chariot, though. Okay, so on to the forest. Beautiful forest there. Ah, it's doing that a lot. Um, then we have the first one being the, the Kami War in foil. A Rampant Rejuvenator. And when it dies, you search your life for X basic land cards where X is the power. That seems like it's a fun commander card. So you just get a bunch of, bunch of counters on this sucker and then uh, let it die. And then, hey, look at the Lion Slash Sash again. That's our fourth one, I believe. Another Kami War and a Cure of the Boundless Sky. Pretty good dragon there. Last pack. Last but not least, hopefully, we have the first one being, or the, the land being an island. And then, yeah, I guess that does it like crazy. It gives you the foil and the non-foil. Is that every pack? Or did I just miss it that every pack does that? And I don't know. Possibly not. Invoke Justice. Kind of cool little reanimation spell. The Swift re re Reconfiguration. Uh, we got the white one. So what we miss? We only miss the blue and the red. And a Blade of the on Oni. And a Foil Invoke Calamity. So some pretty good hits there, for sure, in that collector's edition. You can't be too, too sad about the... Uh, the Double Masters, too. I think the Double Masters had some really good stuff in it with the Exploration and the Worm Coil engine. Yeah, definitely can't go wrong with these guys. So thanks, uh, Mr. Duck Butter, for allowing us to open this on camera for you for this Collector's Edition. Hope you were enjoyed the video and enjoyed the cards being pulled. This is Kevin with Gonro Games. Again, if you would like us to open up product on your behalf, you can definitely sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash roguedeckbuilder. And we'd happy to have you on board. Um, we're going to have a lot more opportunity to be, be sponsoring box openings. Again, once we get everything settled here at the store and the, the uh, you know, dedicated space, I think this should be pretty easy to bust one of these out. So uh, we'll start having to queue up for people that want to do box openings on the video. And uh, I don't know, maybe I can just ramble about other stuff if uh, I choose to do to kind of mix things up. I hope you enjoy this video. Kevin with Rogue Deck Builder slash Gone Rogue Games. Thanks for watching.